Hello, I'm Entrilisium, and this is AFK News. Today, Steam is allowing paid mods. So, Steam for quite a while has had this Steam Workshop thing where publishers can allow people to upload mods to their games onto Steam, and it applies them, and it's really popular with games like City Skylines being, you know, really focused around the modding community, actually. It was a very early decision they made in the development, and City Skylines really is working well from that, and particularly things like Skyrim. Skyrim still sells well on Steam because it's got mods. These mods allow, you know, extra game features that you wouldn't otherwise have. They allow people to come from consoles who might move to PC and go, oh, I can play Skyrim again, but with things that work and with content and with bug fixes. Mods are amazing and I love mods. You know, I've played a lot of mods on my channel. I love promoting mods. And now they're allowing paid mods on Steam so that through the workshop you can buy the mod. So let's just say, you know, full stop for the start. I like the fact that mod creators can get paid because it means that you can have, you know, mod creators getting some, you know, real return for the fact they spent a lot of time. Um, it allows people to put more time into it that they wouldn't otherwise get. Um, it allows, you know, more dedication, allows better mods, it allows them to maybe even, you know, buy assets to use in the mods. Overall, it's a good thing for the modern community for modders to actually be able to get paid in some form. Now, my initial thought was, uh, legally, this is going to be a little bit wobbly because they're making money off the back of the game and the mod doesn't work without the game, so obviously it needs the game. So obviously, unlike you know a YouTube video where you can argue it's transformative, it works in the game itself. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to... But don't worry, this is all done with the publisher's permission and Valve's permission. What the publishers and Valve have done is they've gone together and gone, you know what, we should start charging for mods because, you know, Valve really has one massive goal behind this and I'll put a link to, you know, a good explanation of their goal. But basically, dollar, dollar, dollar. They were basically going, you know, we could make money off this. And you're like, yeah, cool, but modders are getting paid, right? Yeah, but they're getting, currently on Skyrim, 25%. If you pay, you know, a dollar or a pound or a rupee, I don't know why one rupee, but anyway, um, they only get 25% of that. I think it's 25% to them, I think it's 50% to uh, Bethesda on Skyrim, and 50% to Bethesda and 25% to Steam, I think. But it's definitely 25% that the creator gets, which seems incredibly low to me. Now this is this is discussed between Bethesda and Steam. Mod creator doesn't get a say. Okay, I understand, you know, there's many mod creators, there's one Bethesda and there's one Steam. The 25% seems incredibly small. Um, you can charge, you know, amount of money, you can still have them up for free, but it's causing a lot of issues. And let's just quickly go into so many of the issues that already cropped up. This has been around for 24 hours, by the way. These are the number of issues that have cropped up, and the number of issues I thought of immediately, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be these problems, and Lo and behold, they've all happened. So, for a start, people are taking mods off the internet, putting them on Steam, and charging for them, despite the fact they don't belong to them. Okay, this was obviously going to happen, it happens with YouTube videos all the time. Steam do have a DMCA system, they do have a Digital Millennium Copyright Act system for taking things down. They have to, otherwise they are liable. Um, it does consist of an email form. If you're emailing Steam support, we all know how Great Steam support is. Steam have repeatedly acknowledged the fact that their support system is awful and haven't done anything to fix it. Let's just not say that, you know, let's not even dare to say that Steam is particularly consumer friendly in this fact. They don't. They don't have a Steam support system that really works efficiently. And the DMCA system is a little bit dodgy anyway from a content creator standpoint. So the issue here is I don't know when people's stuff will be taken down and given back to them. I don't know if Steam are holding the funds in escrow, and which means that they hold the funds before transferring them if there is a debate about, you know, the authenticity or whatever. It looks like with the sheer number of people who use Steam and the sheer number of people that say play Skyrim, that some of the popular mods are just going to keep being put up there and put up there. And can you imagine trying to be someone off of Steam who creates their mods and puts them out of Steam and goes, you know, just have them for free or whatever, or, you know, donation if you want. Can you imagine a popular mod like that? How many times that'll be put on Steam? And they've got to keep DMCAing it. They shouldn't have to. They just don't want it on Steam. This is going to be a problem. It's not entirely Steam's fault. They're, they comply with the DMCA, but I can't imagine them doing it particularly fast, judging by their you know, track record on support. Secondly, by the way, that is happening a lot right now. Secondly, mods that use other mods. Not really allowed, but the first real mod for Skyrim that is paid has been taken down for just that. There was a debate over, oh, it used part of this mod, and, oh, it said it was okay, and eventually it was taken down, and the original mod who got their stuff, you know, used in that mod had their comments deleted on it. Ugh. 
the, the list of problems just keeps going on. I mean, there are other problems as well. Like, if we talk about mods that people just, you know, upload that are broken. You can get a refund within 24 hours just by clicking a refund button for these mods. If you pay for a mod, you can click the refund button and within 24 hours, if it, you know, you do, you will be allowed a refund. Outside that 24 hours, you are not. Now, if you download a broken mod and you don't have a chance to test it within 24 hours, or if there is, you know, some sort of conflict or whatever with other mods, Steam probably will turn around and go, eh. Especially if the mod is broken and you download it, and then you get a chance to use it outside of 24 hours later, Steam still have a, a liability to make sure that works for you, because they're acting as a reseller for it. If they're acting as a reseller, they take on some of the liability there. They probably will go, oh no, we're not, we're just uh, a store for them, but to some extent, they have to take some of the blame for this. But they're just going to say, oh, but there was a refund bump, 24 hours. It's not the same thing. Um, this is an issue. It's going to allow another Steam Early Access like, oh, all the crap. Just everyone just trying to get something, all the stuff going on there. And you know, we thought that Steam Early Access would filter itself out over time. And we haven't seen that. So I'm just worrying the mod community whether this will happen. And we'll just get lots of broken mods going on. And then another issue again is the fact that this is going to be more DLC. Uh, there is no way to argue about it. I, I like the fact that mods can get paid, but it's DLC. Um, it's downloadable content that you pay for, and some of the proceeds go to the company. It's... I don't like games that are really DLC heavy. I don't think many people really do. Um, you go in, you're like, right, I have to buy this game, but then I have to buy all this DLC, and then I have to buy this, or even the game, you're like, I need all these options, or you just don't want to be bombarded by that. It's one of the reasons I don't play free-to-play games very much. I just don't want to be constantly bombarded by this physical sense of, oh, you shouldn't get that, you shouldn't get that, you shouldn't get that. You could get that, but, you know, probably wait off because it's a little bit expensive. I don't want to have that feeling. I want to play games to get away from my personal expenses. I don't want to be playing Admin Simulator 2014 in the middle of Skyrim. And this is just going to make games more DLC. I mean, effectively, it is farming out the issue of making DLC to people who you have no liability for. You still get 50% of the money as Bethesda. And you're like, oh, okay, I don't need to check it works in future. It could just, you know, not work with a future update of the game. And I'm not liable. Um, it's going to be basically a crappier version of DLC where there is no real custom support. There's no guarantee it'll work. And it's not the modder's fault. But... Ooh, I have, it just doesn't fill me with, it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me want to be like, yay. It really fills me with a sense of impending dread. And another reason we have issues is if people want to sell their stuff on Steam, but they want it somewhere else and they want to just go, okay, I'll, you know, you can get it for free elsewhere and take, I'll take donations for it, whatever. Steam, and this is anecdotal, I'm not completely verified on this, but it appears to be the case, will then ban you from Steam and be like, yeah, you can't sell this here anymore. You've got it somewhere else for donations. Now, from Steam's point of view, it's undercutting their business model. But considering Steam is basically a monopoly, like 90-95% of video game sales go through Steam for PC, you kind of have to be on Steam to a certain extent. And with mods, we might see that. But if you have your, your mod somewhere else and go, you know what, you can have it for free or, you know, donation or whatever, you could, in theory, get banned from Steam for doing that. And you would no longer be able to use your mod there. And more people might be like, well, sure, but Steam is such a large platform, you have to understand they are a complete monopoly. This is problematic. And I like the pay-what-you-want model, I really do. I like the fact that people can have it elsewhere outside of Steam. Because A, takes away from the monopoly, and B, pay-what-you-want is great, because it means that people with low income can, you know, not necessarily have to pay, but still get the experience. People with high income pay and pay more. And you know, it's an idealistic system, it doesn't always work. But it's a decent one, and it's worked so, you know, so far so well for a lot of mods, like, you know, Long War, etc. Although, you know, obviously that's not like a full-time job. But there are problems there as well, and there are just so many problems with this system. I like modders getting paid. I like the fact that modders can do a better job. They can do it full-time. They could, you know, put more work, better assets into their stuff. But I don't think this is the way to do it, and I don't think Steam are the people to do it, despite the fact they're a massive monopoly. They just don't have the customer support, nor really their care for their customers anymore. Can we just be honest? Valve just care about the dollar. They don't care about the customers as much. I don't like it. I mean, I look at this and all it makes me think is, oh dear. 
I don't have to look at every game with mods like it might be DLC. And there are so many issues with, you know, the fact that customers can't, you know, get something that could get broken in a future patch and there's no liability for it. There's something you know, similar like that. There is just so many issues from a customer standpoint. I think I can have to end it there because I can feel, talk about this for ages. But if you've got any comments, put them in the comments and like have a civil discourse and discussion about it because it's so many faceted argument. But I've been a trillion. If you've liked this video, please leave a like. Not subscribe, please consider subscribing. But yeah, I'm looking forward to the discussion in the comments. Stay shiny.